microservices architecture on AWS. Here's a simple e-commerce monolithic application that has a user interface, a server-side application with accounts, inventory and order functions and a database. Here's the same application using microservices. Individual functions are modeled as separate microservices. Every service owns and maintains its own data. There is a broker in the front to route client requests to services. This is what a basic microservices application would look like. In the AWS world, which service can be used to implement a microservice? There are several possibilities. You could use AWS Lambda or deploy your microservice in a container managed by ECS, EKS or Fargate or you could simply host it on EC2. Amongst these, AWS Lambda is a common and easy to use choice. Here's the same e-commerce application on AWS using Lambda functions as microservices. In this case, account service, inventory service and order service. Every service has its own data storage. API Gateway routes incoming requests while user interface could be a rich client single page application or a mobile app. Same application where microservices are deployed in containers managed by AWS Fargate. Let's do a quick comparison of monolith versus microservices architecture. Tightly coupled functions versus loosely coupled services. No fault isolation versus fault isolation. Scale entire application versus selectively scale services. Single code base versus code base by service. Common language tools and database choice of language, tools and database per service, large integrated development team versus smaller service focused teams, centralized data management versus decentralized data management, release entire application at a time, release per service at a time. With respect to microservices security, API Gateway acts as a gatekeeper, apart from routing and throttling requests based on configuration, it provides access control. It supports JWT or JSON Web Tokens, IAM and Lambda as authorizers. These can be configured in API Gateway Console. Inter-Services Communication in Microservices Essentially, the question here is how do you invoke one service from another and is it a good idea to access data of another service directly? In other words, how do you ensure your services are not tightly coupled? You can have services communicate with each other asynchronously, for example, via a messaging service. In this example, we have three queues, an account queue, an inventory queue, and an order queue. If order service wants to send a message to inventory service, it can drop the message into inventory queue. Inventory service will pick up the message and act on it. This results in loose coupling between microservices. Let's take a look at transaction management in microservices. In general, Avoid transactions that span across services. Design your services such that transactions are contained within a service as far as possible. This will keep your implementation simple and easier to manage. Design your services to implement compensatory actions if necessary. For example, in our e-commerce application, a purchase action should result in order service creating an order and inventory service decreasing the inventory. Ideally, this should be a single transaction. However, you could do this in two separate steps 
with a compensatory behavior. Order service can create an order in pending state. This is a complete transaction in itself. After that, it sends a message to inventory service asynchronously via messaging server. Inventory server then decreases the inventory against the product. It responds with a status of success or failure via messaging server to order service. Order service confirms the order or marks it as failed depending on received status. This is an acceptable scenario. However, there will be cases where the steps in a transaction cannot be split. For example, in a banking transaction. In such cases, a single service should complete the transaction by itself. Let's discuss data segregation in microservices. Ideally, every microservice should update and query only its own data. However, this isn't always easy. So here's an approach to consider. Assuming you are using RDBMS, we have separate schemas for each service in a single database. That takes care of data segregation. Individual services still update their own schemas. However, when it comes to querying data, you can build an abstraction layer on top of these schemas using views. These views join and query data across schemas and they do not belong to any particular service. Thus, your updates are neatly segregated However, read spans across service schemas. Here's the same design with a slight variation. Individual microservices still own and update their own databases or schemas. However, they query the data from a read-only aggregate database. Individual databases send their updates to the aggregate database where it becomes available for all microservices to consume. The idea here is to simplify the querying pattern. Usually, updates happen in data silos, while queries tend to span the data silos. It is important to remember that database may not be RDBMS at all. Every service may use a different kind of database, like NoSQL for one service and a graph database for another. Your data access strategy will vary based on that. Let's discuss logging in AWS microservices. It makes sense to centralize logs and we can use Amazon CloudWatch logs for this. Microservices, irrespective of their implementation, as in Lambda or containers, can send their logs to CloudWatch for aggregation and analysis. A large scale application with several microservices would need a robust request tracing mechanism to troubleshoot and identify bottlenecks. AWS X-Ray service can be used for this. A trace ID is added to HTTP requests when it hits first X-Ray integrated service like API Gateway, which then helps with tracing the request flow. Let's look at service discovery in the microservices world. If a microservice X wants to invoke another microservice Y. It should not hard code service Y in its code. Instead, it should look up the service Y and invoke it. AWS Cloud Map can help with this. It can keep track of available services and their locations. However, if you are going to invoke services asynchronously, then you may not need it for microservice lookup. Here's the consolidated diagram of our e-commerce microservices application. And here's our microservices application on AWS. This should give you a good idea of microservices architecture.